How's it going everybody, Ben from Base Set Mew here and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at some cheap Japanese cards. And without further ado, let's get started with this first one right here. The Bulbasaur from the Japanese Pokemon 151 expansion. This one being available for $4.49 or on the European side for €3.54. If we just compare that real quick to the English version which is sitting at around 20 euros, 21 euros for a near mint copy. That is quite ridiculous, and I know which version I would choose by any means. Now the same goes for this Charmander, and in fact every other card on this list. All of these cards I'm pretty sure are cheaper than their English counterpart. That will become very apparent once we look at some of the alternate arts from the Sword and Shield era. But for now, we're looking at this Charmander right here, being available for $6.50, or on the European side, just a little bit cheaper right here for €5.40. Now, we've looked at the other two starters from the Gen 1 era. Here is the third one with Squirtle, this one being available for $4.60, or €3.50 respectively. Last but not least, we can't forget the Pikachu on the Gen 1 starter side. This one being available for $5.50 or €4 Euros respectively. Now we're not quite done with the illustration rares yet. Here we have a Groudon. This one being available for an insane $3.48. So even below $3.50. Pretty sure with free shipping. Yeah, with free shipping. Man, this is a steal and a half. Over on the European side, even cheaper right here at about 3 euros, and this is another one, as I've said with so many other cards, way, way cheaper. Now, this, is even, this isn't even the English version, here's an English one, for 24 euros. Why would you buy the English version if this card is so much cheaper? I know I wouldn't. Now, we still have two more illustration rares to cover in this video, the second to last one being this Eevee. This is still pretty recent, which is why the price is a bit higher than the other ones. Still, it is just over $10 on the US side, while on the European side, a little bit more expensive at 13 euros. Still, compared to the English price for this one, let's see if we can find an English one. 40, here's one for 38.95. Yep, that is quite ridiculous. Last but not least is this Groudon right here, and I'm pretty sure just the same as the Tyranitar. I've actually featured this in some of my past videos on my Collecting on a Budget series. This one in Japanese, from Raging Surf, being available for just under $6, while over on the European side we have to pay a little bit more at €6. Euros. Still, as with so many other cars, I should stop doing it, but it's just so, so cool to show. €40 Euros for the English version, yeah, no thank you. No thank you, I'd much rather have the Japanese one. Now, next up is a card that I originally wasn't going to feature in this video. Since most of the cards in this series are well below $20 or $30. Not this one, this one being the outlier, but I just thought the price was so unbeatable compared to the English version. This one is available for $56, while over on the European side we have to pay a little bit more, at €60. Euros. Still, that compared to the English price, which should be at around €100, Euros, yeah, right here for an English version, 100 euros, is still pretty good in my opinion, right? Not only that, you also get the benefit of having way better texture, and in my opinion also holofoil, because there's just something about Japanese alternate arts that just makes them shine so much more as compared to the English versions. So this one is definitely a really, really cool card. Now next here are some cheap alternate arts. The first of these cheap alternate arts is this Beedrill V from Space Juggler. This one being available for a little over $17, while over on the European side we are a little bit lucky, a little bit cheaper at 16 euros. And the English version for this card is actually at around 30 euros now. I was really surprised when researching this. Could have sworn it was sitting at like 15 euros in English for the longest time. But nope, got pretty expensive for this card. Now the last alternate art in this video is this Hisuian Sneasler V, available at $8. Now, I've actually featured this card before on the channel. I still believe this is a really cool illustration. That aside though, for $8, such a stunning illustration with the cool Japanese texture, that's a no-brainer for me. 
Over on the European side though, it is a little bit more expensive, but I still say this price is very competitive at 13 euros. Now, next up, I have two cards from VMAX Climax. The first one being this Blaziken V. This one is available for just under $10, while over on the European side, it is a little bit cheaper at 8 euros. This is actually a really cool card, but then again, most of the character super rares from VMAX Climax are. So either one you buy, you really can't go wrong. But as I said, this is the second card from VMAX Climax. It's just the Blaziken VMAX, this one being even cheaper than the V for just over $9, and I just love this illustration. I love how Mei is like holding on for dear life to Blaziken's leg right here. This is great stuff. Over on the European side, this one is a bit cheaper at 8 euros or 7 euros right here. So really, really great stuff. Now we're moving on to the last few cards right here. These ones are actually from V-Star Universe. And I do believe that now would be a great time if you want to pick up some V-Star Universe cards. Unless we get a situation with Shiny Star V, where it's basically printed into Oblivion, V-Star Universe ought to go out of print at some point. And when it does, these cards will be picking up, so if you want them for a good price, now would be the time, in my opinion. Um, first up is this Entei. While definitely not being one of my favorites from V-Star Universe, it goes well together with the other two legendary dogs. So which is why I put this on this list right here. This one is available for $10.60 or 9 euros. Speaking of the other legendary dogs, here we have the Raiko. Definitely a very cool illustration. This one is available for just under $14. Well, over on the European side, it's a little bit cheaper, so we're a little bit lucky. This one is 10 euros 50. Now, here is obviously the coolest illustration out of the three legendary dogs. It's the Suicune. This one being available for $10.40 or just 11 euros, respectively. Now, last but not least, we have this Mewtwo V-Star. This one is available for $17, and honestly, when researching it, I also couldn't believe how cheap the Japanese version is compared to the English one. Let's just check the European price right here. So we have to pay around 20 euros, which is still very, very competitive because the English version of this card right here, I'm pretty sure this is a 60, 60 euro card, $60 card, yeah? Yeah, here we go. Here's a near mint version in English for 63 euros, man. This card has gotten really, really expensive in English. I'd much rather buy a Japanese version, and I still would have le money left over to buy some of these other cards on the list. Okay, so after editing, I found out the video was way too short for my liking, like way shorter than any of the other ones I've done before. So I found a few more cards that I would like to show you. First up is this Raichu right here. I completely missed this first time around. This, the Japanese one, is available for $3.39. While over on the European side, it's three euros and twenty. If we compare that to the English version with so many others, it's like thirty euros, about thirty euros over here in Europe. But I do believe it's like forty dollars over in the US. Can't believe I've missed this one. Honestly, I'm I was really surprised to see how expensive this is in English. Either way, Japanese version is pretty cheap, so you might want to go out and grab that one. Now here's actually another card from VMAX Climax. You know, I looked at some of the other cards again, and I found that this one is actually a little bit cheaper in Japanese as compared to the English counterpart. Uh, this one is available for $24.70, while over on the European side, a little bit cheaper, so a little bit lucky, at 22 euros. This is also a really cool illustration. In my opinion, not my favorite character super rare from VMAX Climax. I still do like the Blaziken better and probably the Mimikyu V. Although the Mimikyu V is actually cheaper in English than it is in, in Japanese, which is why it isn't featured on this list. But this is still a pretty cool illustration. I have to give it that. Okay, next up is a card that's actually a little bit expensive, but I guess it's the same story as the Aerodactyl earlier. I just really wanted to show this off. Because the Japanese Mew EX from Shiny Treasure EX is actually available for under $50. And surprisingly for us Europeans, it's around the same price, maybe a little bit more expensive. But it's still cheaper than the English counterpart. So I really wanted to point this one out. Now another card that is a little bit more expensive, but still cheaper than the English counterpart, is the Raging Bolt from Wild Force. 
And all of these cards that were released in Temporal Forces, be it The Walking Wake or Iron Bolt that I featured earlier, I actually love all of their illustrations. I featured this one because this one actually ends up being cheaper than the English counterpart. The other ones are all around the same price, Japanese versus English, but this one is actually cheaper. Um, this one being available for $34 over on eBay and then on card market for the European version, a little bit more expensive at 36 euros. Still cheaper than the English counterpart though, look at this, the English counterpart is sitting at 64 euros. That's pretty expensive. Now I actually found another alternate art right here with the Haunch Crow V from Starbirth. This one being available for $6.50. While on the European side, it's a little bit more expensive for a Nearman copy, around 8 euros 50 or 11 euros. A little bit more expensive, but I still think it's a great price, especially as I've mentioned it multiple times throughout the video, with that better texture. Now, last but not least, I have two more cards from V-Star Universe, actually. First one being this Leafeon V-Star, available for $12.72, which is an absolute steal compared to the English prices. Over on the European side, a little bit more expensive at around 15 euros, but still, I actually do really like this illustration. When I first saw it, I actually wasn't sure how, how good it is, but it's really growing on me. I actually really, really like it. I was actually considering adding the Elefion and then the Glacion, which we're going to feature next, to my binder, you know, in, in the middle between all the Sword and Shield alternate arts. But I opted for an EV card because that just made more sense to me. Still, the illustrations are top-notch. Same with this Glacion. I think I actually pulled this one in English before. Might have been off-camera, though I can't remember. If I do find the video, I'll be sure to link it down below somewhere. But this is actually pretty cool. And at below $12 for this one on eBay, or on the European side, $12.50 for a Japanese one or 13 euros right here, sorry, 13 euros or 12 euros 50. Really, really affordable. And as I said, so much cheaper than the English counterpart. From what I've noticed though, that the Crown Zenith cards are actually picking up a lot recently. And that might be because, well, Crown Zenith is probably out of print by now. And I actually do strongly believe that Crown Zenith is the best set of, of the Sword and Shield era. Some might argue that Evolving Skies is. If the pull rates were better, I'd agree, and if it was actually affordable. But for now, I actually personally think Crown Zenith is the best set of the Sword and Shield era, which is why I'm thinking most of these are going up in price. Luckily, though, the Japanese versions are still cheaper for the most part. But well, I guess it does it for this video at last. If you enjoyed this one, then please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, then give it a thumbs down. Tell me in the comments below what you didn't like, so I can try to fix that for future videos. Other than that, right here is a video that YouTube thinks is best suited for you. Right here is the subscribe button, click this one first, then click this video. Check out any of the other videos in the description below. And for that matter, check out the playlist of my Collecting on a Budget series. I've done a lot of these videos before, and most of them are actually pretty cool. Maybe not the early ones, but there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Peace, peace. Take care.